Hi friends, earlier I showed you a circuit of a powerful thrice recharger for car batteries. That simple circuit was highly reliable, but it hasn't protections against reverse polarity and short circuit. Today we will talk about the thrice recharger, but it already has the above mentioned protection systems. Thus, the presented circuit is practically indestructible and reliable, but there are some drawbacks and we will talk about it at the end. In general, chargers are linear and pulsed. Linear, as a rule, have low efficiency. Therefore, the power element, the transistor, needs a large radiator and additional active cooling. If you need a charger for high current or a star charger, then you need to look to pulse circuits. Pulse charging devices can be divided into two groups, circuits with PWM regulation of the charge current and phase pulse method. The first option is certainly good. There the power is adjusted by a PWM signal. The longer the impulses that control the power transistor working in switch mode, the greater the current and vice versa. But such circuits are complicated because they must have a PWM controller, a power transistor control unit and a powerful output part. Also, a lot of important factor is the cost of components. Good original field effect transistors are expensive. The same can be said about power diodes, which are available in such power sources. We know that a more powerful circuit costs greater, and if you plan to assemble a starter charger with a large output current, then it will cost significantly. In return, such circuits make it possible to fully adjust or stabilize the output voltage and current, so you can build universal charges for any batteries. The efficiency of pulse circuits is very high due to the operation of the power transistor in switching mode. It is either open or closed. Phase pulse power controllers are also a type of pulse controllers. The same principle, only the power element is controlled not by the PWM signal, but by changing the frequency of the control pulses. This adjustment method is applicable to thricer and triac. At that method, the power adjustment made by cutting off the part of initial sinusoidal signal. For more details on the principle of operation, watch the video about the dimmer. The link is in the description. Phase pulse regulators have extremely high reliability if everything is done correctly. There is no PWM controller, in its place a relaxation oscillator, with generating control pulses with an adjustable frequency. Such oscillators are very simple and can be assembled from components which you easily find. The advantage of such chargers is high efficiency and the fact that they are so-called rubber. If you put a more powerful transformer, thristors and everything, you can have any power of the circuit. Now let's go to our circuit. This is a diagram of the industrial charger BARS 8A. I didn't change anything, I just transferred the circuit to a modern component base. With your permission, we will consider this option. Pay attention to the thick lines. These are lines with high current. A wire for these lines is needed with a large cross section depending on the rated current. For components, 20% tolerance is accepted. This will not much affect the work. Despite the fact that the secondary circuit is low voltage and therefore is safe, device is powered by mains voltage, so be careful and follow safety rules when working with mains voltage. The first start of the circuit must do through a 40-60 watt mains incandescent lamp, which is connected instead of a fuse. The control circuit is assembled on a compact printed circuit board. It can be downloaded with a full archive from the link in the description. If home PCB technologies are no longer satisfactory or costly, you can always order quality and beautiful boards on the GLCPCB website. This is one of the leading factories in the market with many years of experience. The quality of products is guaranteed. GLCPCB will produce for you printed circuit boards of any complexity and size in unlimited quantities. The link to GLCPCB can be found in the description under the video. The circuit has a simple relaxation oscillator built on two transistors. Another transistor is an amplifying one. In addition to these, we have two other transistors. Let's see how it works. When the device is connected to the mains without load, nothing will happen. The circuit will not work if the rechargeable battery isn't connected to the output. 
When the battery is connected, minus from it will go to the emitter of the first transistor and a positive voltage to the LED and the limiting resistor will come to the base. This will lead to the unlocking of the transistor. In this case, the voltage will appear on the divider, which consists of a variable and a constant resistor. By rotating a variable resistor, we can smoothly open or close the second transistor. The more this transistor is open, the faster the capacitor will charge. It is the charge speed of this capacitor that determines the frequency of the pulses generated by the relaxation oscillator. Thus, the rotation of the specified resistor leads to a change in the frequency of the pulses. These pulses are fed through diodes to the control pins of the powerful thyristors. In this part of the circuit, a bridge rectifier is built, but it is adjustable because pair of diodes in the rectifier is replaced by thyristors. Two other diodes are ordinary rectifying. The output voltage of this charger is pulsed. It is believed that this is even good for batteries and helps to restore them. The device isn't afraid of short circuits because without a battery it will not turn on at all. If the battery connected incorrectly, that is to say, the polarity is reversed, then the LED will be connected by the anode to the minus and the power will simply not go to the circuit. If everything is connected correctly, the LED will light. Does the device work if the rechargeable battery is much discharged? Yes, it will work. 6 volts are enough to start the circuit, so a dead battery isn't an obstacle. Now about the components. All diodes used in the circuit are selected with a current of 1 to 1.5 amps, except of course power ones, but we will talk about them later. The first four transistors are any low power with voltage of collector, emitter from 40 volts. First transistor in my case is more powerful, but it isn't necessary. The control transistor will heat up during the operation, so it must be installed on a small heatsink. This resistor must be with a power of at least 1 watt. It will heat up during the operation. I installed a 2 watt. The power part consists of 2 diodes and 2 thyristors. Here I used all components. Here are the diodes dead shell 13550, ideal for these purposes. They are for 50 amps. I had diodes for 80 amps, but I used them in another project. The case of these diodes very well removes heat, and in theory they can work at higher currents. Thryster T14280 is at 80 amperes. The voltage of diodes and thyristors in principle can be from 40 volts, but I used with a large margin thyristors for 700 volts, diodes for 600. This isn't necessary, just such components were available. As you can see, despite the compact size, thyristors and diodes are very powerful, which is quite unusual since the powerful Soviet Union radio components are usually very bulky. About the cooling, diodes must be installed on a massive radiator, but for thyristors, the radiator can be smaller because they operate in a pulse mode. Although it all depends on what current your circuit is designed for and what power the transformer is. And don't forget apply thermal paste. 100 ohm resistors aren't mounted on the board, but soldered directly to the thyristors. The secondary winding of the power transformer is at least 18 to 20 volts. This is enough to charge any car's 12 volt batteries. The winding current will depend on your needs. 6 amps are enough to charge batteries with a nominal capacity of 60 amps hours. But such circuits can provide an output current of tens of amperes. It all depends on the transformer and power rectifier. You can get up to 100 amps and even more. It seems to be all. Charging current adjustment is very smooth. Regarding the shortcomings, we understood that the circuit is reliable but it doesn't have stabilization, like most circuits based on thyristors. That is, surges and drops in the mains voltage will lead to an increase and decrease in the output voltage, so the device needs some visual control. The ammeter and voltmeter will show you the value of the charge current and voltage on the battery. You must make conclusion based on the readings of this unit. If the charge current is zero but the battery voltage is less than the value that should be in a full charge state, then increase the current by rotating the regulator. Of course I agree that this isn't convenient, but believe me, in practice you don't have to adjust the charger very often if you charge the same battery. 
That's all. Necessary links are as always in the description. I say goodbye until next time. With you was Kasian TV.